What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here, and this is NCIS Season 16, Episode 1, Destiny's Child. So, I was trying to figure out what show I wanted to go to next, um, just because, you know, now that I'm, I'm back and I'm wanting to do more reviews, I don't know where to go next. Uh, I do have a lot of different shows to get caught up on, so it was just a matter of finding out where to start. Honestly, I still do want to go towards, um, there are a couple shows, like on Hulu, that I, that I just got, that I really do want to check out, but... For now, because there are still a couple games that I'm working on finishing, um, and so I'm kind of, I kind of want to tackle a series that isn't going to make me think a whole lot, and if I'm not 100% paying attention, maybe it's not going to be such a bad thing. So yeah, NCIS is a good place to start, because honestly, I mean, it's season 16. Yeah, they're... they're Honestly, it should be done. It should have ended a while ago. Um, I had to watch some of the videos that I did just to kind of catch myself up on what happened. And, uh, yeah, so last season ended with uh, Jack Sloan was going crazy because she heard this guy that apparently tortured her. She's trying to figure out if it was actually this guy or not. And this whole thing of is it real, is it not? And, of course, it is real. And then, ultimately, he kidnaps Director Vance at the end. Uh, apparently, he killed... Director Vance killed this guy's two brothers, so essentially this episode is trying to get Director Vance back. Um, Gibbs has been put in charge, they're trying to find out where he could have possibly gone. A little weird, like, I don't, because the last thing we saw last season was Director Vance's plane has this Hakeem guy on it, and he's just like, you know, you have you were the cause of the death of my people, infidel. I'm just like... Okay, and then we start this one, and Vance is running away through the woods, and then he punches this one guy out, and then he gets captured. I'm like, okay. Um, really weird setup, because <laughs> you're just, like, running, and he's just like, <sighs> and this guy's just like, all right, give me your best shot, old man, and he just decks him, and he's done. And he's like, that wasn't even my best shot, young man. And then stands up, and then he gets decked, and I'm like, you know, if you wouldn't waste your time, you know, spitting back little cheesy one-liners, you might have actually gotten away, just saying. Um, but anyway, so he gets taken to this place, he's being held and interrogated by Akeem, um, Akeem gets his money, or these gold bullions or whatever, out of the, apparently his accounts were frozen or something like that, I don't know. So he has Director Vance rob the bank for him, which was weird. Like, why are you sending him to do that? That doesn't make any sense. And then, he has Director Vance, like, help him out with some things, make people look, you know, assume that he is rising to power again, causing people to fear, essentially wants to blow up this nuclear reactor by setting up this whole complicated thing where this guy pretends to be a CIA agent, and then... Director Vance has them lock it down, and that's the only way they can get this Trojan horse in, and it's through these lava lamps that apparently program the code, and it's some weird convoluted scheme, and then ultimately the team stops him, because of course they do. Um, so yeah, all that happened. So, a few things in this episode, and I apologize for yawning, but it is late. Um, but yeah, a couple things about this episode. First of all, I want to talk about Casey. Uh... Yeah. Stop with the Abby stuff. <laughs> I'm done. It's been two episodes since she's officially joined the team, or maybe three, and I'm done. I am sick of her already. Because why? Oh, she, she just she's just you know quirky. She's basically taking Abby's role. No, no, she's not. She's not just taking Abby's role in the team. She's trying to take Abby's character. <laughs> like. It's essentially the writers of the show said, you know, I know we're losing Polly Perrette as Abby, but we just can't think of any other character in that role. So let's just keep it the same. Let's just essentially make this girl the same exact person that Abby is. You know, she's trying to be the same. But the problem is, this girl is not as good of an actor as Polly Perrette. So it comes off... It's extremely forced and extremely awkward. And it doesn't work. I mean, honestly, just listening to her, 
listening to how she talks, the way she's delivering her lines, what she's saying, it's essentially Abby. It's essentially, they keep writing as if this girl is Abby, but it's not Abby. And there's even a point where she's like, oh, McGee said Abby always liked to build up to the punch. I'm like, how many times are you going to make these jokes? How many times are you going to do this where it's like, oh, well, so-and-so said that Abby's all, Abby always did this. Well, you're not Abby. You're somebody new. You're supposed to be somebody new. So stop trying to be Abby. Please. I'm done with it. I'm so done with it. Hmm. <sighs> so that was something I knew. I'm just like going into this new season. I know I'm going to have to deal with not having Abby on the team, but also the writers trying to pretend like Abby is still on the team and she's not. And I just, I hate it whenever characters try to do this where they try to be that same archetype character as the person they're replacing, but they're not as good as that. And like I said last season when I was talking about Torres and Bishop, they're both their own characters. They fill the same archetype role of, you know, Torres being kind of the goof off, you know, tough guy um, that is, he's always trying to flirt with the ladies and Bishop fits the archetype of kind of the hard nosed, straight edge type of character but they're not they're not uh they're not Ziva or Tony. They are Torres and Bishop. They're two different characters that still fit the same role. This girl is she should be fitting the same role as Abby. She's the tech, she's the nerdy type. You know, she's the one that that kind of knows her way around the computer where you know, although we also have McGee that fits that too, but she's kind of like the the awkward quirky type on the team. You can do that without literally being exactly like Abby. You know, because you think about it, most shows have that type of character, but they're most of the time different characters. Like, Abby was not the same character as, like, Garcia from Criminal Minds. They're both the same type of character, but two different people. This is essentially, they're trying to make Casey Abby, and it's not working. And I know I've probably ranted about this for far too long, but I'm tired and I'm frustrated with it. Also really frustrating, um, Vance. I mean, hey, uh, here, here's some water. I'm CIA. You can totally trust me, by the way. I'm not working for the bad guy. I'm sorry. What? What? And Vance just goes, oh, okay. Sure. I'll, I'll believe that. Let me just uh, let me just do whatever you tell me to do, buddy. Hang on, give me that phone. I'll call and I'll let them know what's going on. Cause I'm sure you're just a nice guy helping me out, right? Right. And don't get me wrong, like it was a bit more convincing than I think at, at first when he was just like, yeah, I'm CIA. You know, he did do a little bit more to convince him, like giving him a gun without a firing pin in it and giving him a burner phone to use. But also, I'm just kind of like. Yeah, but that still could be something that the bad guys want you to do. Make the call and then check, can the gun fire? You know, like, I, I don't know. It just, it seems weird to me that Vance was just like, oh, you say you're CIA? Sure, I'll, let me just buy that. I, I'm sure no bad guy ever in history has sent in a guy pretending to be helpful. Like, I'm sure we've never seen that tactic used before by anybody. I bet CIS has used this tactic before. You send in somebody that's like, hey, hey, I'm here to help you out. Now tell me some, tell me what I need to know. Or, hey, could you do this for me? Like, I don't know. The fact that it didn't even cross his mind. The fact that he was just like, oh, you're CIA? Okay, cool. Just ask, ask for something that only a CIA agent would know. Ask for some sort of passcode. Ask who's your handler. Anything... But no, he just buys into it and then gives the bad guys exactly what they want. I'm like, that's too easy. It's stupidity. Because yeah, like, I think about last season with the the guy that like they got acquitted from prison. Or you know, they got acquitted for the crime, but it turns out he actually did it and he really is a serial killer. The reason that they got fooled into it is because one, the guy was extremely convincing. But also, he actually did have something that made him look less suspicious. There was evidence to back that up. So they looked into it and said, oh, well, you know what? He's actually right-handed, and the guy that the guy that did the killing was left-handed, so it might not have been him. And they get that evidence, and they turn it in, and it turns out, oh, well, he's a switch hitter, so never mind. He's actually, um, yeah, he's actually the killer. That was clever. That was a clever setup. This guy was clearly, uh, he was very smart. He was a psychopath. 
very intelligent thinker. This was just, hey, guess what? You can believe me. I'm definitely working for the CIA. Oh, yeah, and by the way, uh, fact checkers on Facebook, they said that they fact checked me, and because I said it, that's how that works. Because, you know, when uh, a certain website claims that, oh, we're not involved in any child sex trafficking, oh, yeah, oh, well, they said it, so it's not true. I'm a little salty about all of that, just to let you know. Anyways, um, but yeah, so just really frustrated with that. I thought it was dumb. Also, the whole lava lamp thing was just kind of stupid. Like, the jokes in this one about that didn't land very well, and I think they were trying to make it very funny, and it was not funny. Uh, and then also, a little weird that, you know, after all of this goes down... <laughs> first of all, I did like Sloane in this one. Because at first I was pissed at her because of the way she, like, handled the whole situation. Tying this woman to a chair, interrogating her, and then you're just basically going, Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I'm like, yeah, you're an idiot. And then the woman turns on her like, see, you're still an idiot. And then all of a sudden we find out that she planned this get captured to lead the team to where she is because she told Gibbs about it and all this stuff. The problem I have with this is that Gibbs and Bishop were just at this place where the whole nuclear explosion was about to go off. They were just there. And then that gets foiled. And then the next scene, they're at the place... Where, where Sloan and Vance are being held. I'm thinking, wait, they were just over... Th d How long was in between those two scenes? Because it seemed like it was... They stopped it, gets reported on the media, Gibbs and team are at the door. Oh, well, okay then. <laughs> I guess that just happened. Um, so yeah, it was just... It seemed weird. Like, it seemed like a weird jump cut just to go from here to there and no real indication of how much time has passed. Um... Because it seems like this would have been something that, you know, they probably would have gotten rid of Vance at this point. They probably would have gotten rid of Sloan at this point. But anyways. Um, but then the final thing that was just really dumb, you know, because uh, Vance's daughter is involved in this. And she goes to Gibbs to ask about, you know, what's going on with her dad. And then we find out she's being looked after by an agent. And so then we hear Hakeem's going to send somebody after Vance's daughter. And so, of course... Like, it, it just so happens to work out where the agent that's guarding her spills something, goes to clean it up, and when he does, he leans his head in front of her, and so he gets shot in the head. And so then the the guy who just pinpoint shot the guy in the head now just wastes a bunch of bullets and can't hit her, even though she's hiding under a table that has nothing underneath it, really, except for some bars. You know, like, it's not like it's a it's a box table that she can hide behind that you can't see her. She's not visible. And so then she runs away. She grabs the agent's gun. She's shooting back at him. She's a terrible shot. He's a terrible shot. I mean, were the writers watching Dumb and Dumber at the time? And just, like, they're writing this scene, and then that scene comes on. It's like, Harry, you're alive. You're a terrible shot. And they're like, <laughs> that's funny. Oh, I wrote that into the script. Oh, well. I mean... He he goes from marksman aim, nails the agent in the head when he put his head in front of hers, and then can't hit a thing. <laughs> like, and he's also does he came only like he only gets people that have a flair for the dramatic. You know, like because she's running away, she's like she's like shooting down at him, and she like runs out of bullets, and I'm thinking, all right, so she's dead, and the guy is just. And then Gibbs and McGee show up and shoot him dead. I'm like, you know, if you're a really good assassin hitman, she would be dead. But instead you wanted to look all intimidating and menacing, so whenever she shot the shots and missed you, and you were just like, alright, now I'm going to intimidatingly walk towards you, pointing my gun, and I'm dead. I... So yeah, not a great start to the season. Um... I, yeah, I, I hate to say, I love NCIS, I've loved it for a long time, but man, this, uh, <laughs> does not bode well, you know, considering season 16, you want to see something new, you want to see anything new, you want to see, why is this show still going on, give me a reason to want to see more episodes of NCIS. 
New team member, not a good new team member. She's annoying. She's not as good as Abby. She's trying to be Abby, and she's not as good as Abby. The first case is just filled with so many issues, so many holes, so many inconsistencies. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not looking forward to it. So, that's it for this one. On to the next one. See you there in a sec. And now, episode two, Love Thy Neighbor. Um, so this one, a bit better. Uh, the case itself was pretty interesting. I, I don't know, I just like the fact that this guy was researching a psychopath serial killer who went, like, silent seven years ago, um, called the dentist, and apparently they were taking teeth out of the people they killed, and then just all of a sudden went quiet. So he was researching it, found out one of his, these neighbors in this cul-de-sac was the dentist, uh, broke into their home, stole the, the teeth, and then course she found out saw it on the nanny cam then went and killed him um so overall i mean the case was pretty good um and then the stuff on the outside with torres kind of hit or miss uh the stuff with the the random guy showing up and you know being all racist and then also homophobic it's like realistically these guys they don't exist on the level that most tv shows want to make them think want to make us think they exist is like oh guys this is common like you just go out there if you meet anybody that's like like this i mean you're probably gonna see like uh, several of them i mean these guys this is exactly how they act they're gonna make racist comments they're gonna be like oh you and your boyfriend I'm like first of all if there's anybody that actually still thinks this way most of the time they're not gonna say anything like this unless one <laughs> they are actually a part of some like organization, you know, like some of the the actual racist organizations that do sort of exist still. Um, and also, they're probably not going to say anything unless they're drunk. And these guys didn't seem drunk, really. They just kind of seem like assholes. And like these, I don't know, just, I hate it whenever TV shows do this because they perpetuate this idea that, oh yeah, these guys, they exist, guys. They, they're so, these guys are evil and they're still out there. I'm like, yeah, we all know this. So... Like the, it's not, like it's not as big of a problem as a lot of TV shows want to make us think. Like, yeah, do they exist? Sure. And if they did exist, I'm sure what happened in this episode would probably happen a lot, but it doesn't. <laughs> um, but I did like where you know Sloane basically told Torres, "Hey, beating them up doesn't really help anything. Like it basically just sort of spreads more hate." Um, because, again, not a lot of times when you see guys like that is this idea tackled, where it's like, maybe punching them in the face doesn't really do anything. You know, just sort of aggravates the problem. And honestly, looking at how things are going right now, yeah, that is a good message, because hate breeds more hate, and, it, you know, it, it is very, very true. Um, but I don't know, I just, whenever TV shows tackle this type of issue, they generally don't do it in a good way manner you know the way they do it is not very realistic so i just always have an issue whenever that happens um but as far as what was what torres was going through it actually turned out pretty sad and uh sweet at the end because we find out those sunglasses that he stepped on were uh, glasses given to him by reeves and that's what has been bothering him he's still Mrs. Reeves. I'm like, you know, that's good. Because I I do remember last season, one of the things that just really <laughs> irked me is how Abby was given so much attention. And people were like, oh man, I miss Abby so much. You know, I can't believe she's left the team. I'm like, dude, Reeves died. Are we just forgetting about him? <laughs> like, it was pretty frustrating for me that nobody's really talking about it. Abby, or not Abby, Bishop got upset about it in one episode, but most of the other team don't didn't really talk about it. And so it was nice to see an episode where Torres is still dealing with that, and he stepped on the sunglasses, and that kind of set him off a little bit. Um, and I, I liked how Gibbs handled him in this episode, too. You know, trying to, I guess, get him back to where he was as an agent before all this happened. He could tell something was up with him, but he's also not going to force Torres to talk about it. He's just he's trying to get Torres to talk about it because he knows that's what, what's good for him. But if he's not going to, then he's not useful to him as an agent, so he's going to send him home. And, I don't know, it just shows, again, that Gibbs knows how to be a leader, which is nice. But So that ended up pretty well. Um, but a couple things that just sort of stood out to me is not great in this episode. 
Uh, first of all, again, I feel like KC is just still not growing on me at all. Um, still just kind of feels like she's trying to be Abby, and it's just not working out at all. Uh, so, still waiting to see if they do anything different with her character. Maybe if they give her a backstory that's interesting, I might grow to like her a bit more. But right now, it still just doesn't feel like she's integrated to the team at all. It feels like she's still trying to take Abby's spot. Not just not just the role, but also the character. It's still not good. Um, and then also the woman psychopath at the end of the episode... It's like they don't know what a psychopath is like. You know, it's just like, oh, uh, just sound crazy. You know, like the director says, just try to make yourself sound crazy. It's like, what teeth are you talking about? Like, I don't know, she she started breaking up her speech pattern. She started just all of a sudden, like, she's talking normal and it screams really loudly. I'm like, what psychopaths have you been watching? <laughs> like, are you watching, like, crazy villains on kids' channels? What is this? It was just a weird, I don't know if it was the actor's choice or if the director told her to act like that, but it, it was very cartoony almost. Um, it just, when you think psychopath, you think somebody who does speak a little bit crazy, but is very calm and almost like they, they are plotting, you know, like it, TV psychopaths mainly, not even real psychopaths. I'm sure real psychopaths, some of them don't even sound crazy, some of them just like sound normal. But TV psychopaths, you think of, like, Hannibal Lecter. You think of, you know, I guess the t TV version of Ted Bundy. You, know, you think people like that. You don't think, think of people that just all of a sudden just start breaking up their speech patterns. Like, that's that's not psychopathic. It's weird. It's just goofy. Um, so, I don't know. That, just something else that stood out. But overall, a better episode. Just still not quite enjoyable enough um i'm still kind of i'm not laughing as much you know there were a few more funny lines in this episode um some of the the dialogue between you know like gibbs and the team and uh some of the stuff with torres going on and you know jimmy <laughs> getting into the fight I, I will say there's something kind of funny about the fact that jimmy was all excited about the fact that he got into a fight with torres and beat up those those assholes um so at the end, whenever Gibbs is like, you know, sometimes hate just deserves a good punch in the mouth. He's like, thank you, sir. Don't do it again. Yes, sir. <laughs> that that did make me genuinely laugh. So there are still moments where I'm laughing because NCIS still does have those funny moments and still does have good character moments. It's just not as common. And the stuff around those laughs is just not as good as it used to be. So... Again, I know it's season 16, but if you're going to have this many seasons, make sure you have a reason why you're still going. And I just don't know if they really do. I think they're just sort of here because, oh, well, people are still watching it because it's kind of a guilty pleasure. They, people can just turn on in the background and be mindless about it. And I, I don't know. I just feel like that's kind of a disservice to how good the show used to be. Like, it actually used to have compelling drama, and now it's just kind of like, eh, just turn it on, it's kind of funny to laugh at every now and again, so. But anyways, on to the last of these three episodes, see you there in a sec. And now, episode three, boom. Um, eh, it was okay. Uh, just, I don't know, I felt like the, the whole case could have been a lot more interesting if they kept it a bit more focused. But they kind of lost focus along the way, you know, it, it was seeming to be focused on this idea that you know, this woman, she's in this Wives of the Army or whatever it was called. Wives of War, I think. Um, she was in this show and, you know, her husband thinks that she's trying to kill him because she's actually a psychopath and she's driven crazy by the show. Not a real psychopath, but, you know, she went crazy after getting this fame. Um, and then there was this guy that was apparently stalking her. And it, they seem to be setting up something interesting here. And honestly, the if the idea that he might have set the bomb himself to kind of frame her for it and get out of this whole thing. I don't know, like, I guess that idea was kind of intriguing for me. And then, you know, it got messed up. Like, if that had been what happened and it got messed up because these people came in and were, you know, robbing people's mail and that's how they died. Whereas if originally, like, he would have known how to disarm the bomb. And so he was going to open it, disarm it, and be like, look what my wife did. She tried to kill me. 
I feel like that would have actually been a fun concept to play with, but they brought it to like they brought that idea out so soon that I was just like, okay, so that's not what happened. But that would be pretty interesting. But instead, it turns out it's this guy who, honestly, I lost track of what was going on. Like apparently, this uh, the guy that was originally targeted wronged him for some reason, um, and then this. Uh, medical professional declared him unfit and so it like kept him from getting uh, a medal for the army and then his wife left him and so that's why he it was basically these targets that wronged him I don't know it just it took away some of the intrigue that I felt like they were building up at the beginning of the episode and honestly just something about the the wife of the guy that was targeted originally something about her just really set me off you know like I don't know, it wasn't like a good, like, ooh, they're they're doing a good job of making me hate her. There's just something about her, I'm like, she just, she's very one-dimensional character, she's not really written that well, and she's also awful person. I don't know, it just, I didn't like her character at all, and I'm just, anytime she was on the screen, and the fact that, honestly, it might have been the fact that McGee was kind of like fawning over her a little bit, and I get, I get the fact that he's really in love with the show, he and Delilah watch. Um, which they did make hints. I did find it kind of funny because it seemed to be dropping some hints that it's like, oh yeah, I'm sure Delilah really likes this show because he just kept gu- kept gushing about it. But it was the fact that, I don't know, he he saw how awful a person she was and yet he was still just kind of like, oh no, she, do- she doesn't have anything to do with this. Oh, I'll go help you with, with the stuff out of your car. I don't know. Like, for me, McGee seems a bit more intelligent and I know sometimes he can be a little naive, but it feels like he's grown past this. You know, I, I think this would be funnier if it were Torres, you know, because he just sees a hot woman. It doesn't care how shallow she is. But for McGee, he's not like that. So the fact that he was so taken in just because she was a celebrity from his favorite show, I felt like they could have played more into the idea of, hey, don't meet your idols. You know, that, that would have been funnier for me, but they didn't do that. And they also made her a despicable character. So I just, I didn't really like her story at all. And it didn't... Ultimately, it didn't even play into the reason why the bomb got sent in the first place. At least not that... I might have missed it, because like I said, I'm not fully paying attention to these episodes. But I believe it was the husband that did something wrong to the guy who sent the bomb. Um, so anyway. Uh, aside from that, we also see Leon. He's going to physical therapy. Um, and I did find it a little bit weird that... They were like, hey, you're good to go. And he just was like, actually, I still feel pain. Can I stay? I don't know. I don't know if it's that easy to request another week of physical therapy. You know, and the doctor's looking at you and like, you're good. Um, I did. I had to ask my dad about it because he knows more about physical therapy than I do. And he's like, well, you know, it might be a mental thing. Like, I, I could see them giving him another week if he said you know, he, he didn't feel well, like, they could realize it's a mental thing and decide to give it to him just to kind of get him past that mentally. Um, but I guess mainly because he is the director of NCIS, I figured it wouldn't be this easy to just be like, no, we need you back at your job, so you can't just take another week off just because you say you don't feel well. You know, maybe a week of actual therapy with, you know, somebody like Sloan would be requested or suggested to him. But for him to just be like, yeah, I need another week, and the doctor just say, oh, okay, well, if you do, then we'll give it to you. It just seemed a little too easy, and I do think Leon was being a little ridiculous with that. Like, I I get it, I understand, but also, I don't know, Leon's never been shown to be this weak of a character. And I get the fact he did, I I, I will say, something just kind of popped in my head, I did like the fact, they addressed the fact that he made a mistake. You know, I was... I was really worried that that wasn't going to get brought up at all, that, come on, dude, like, you just so easily trusted this guy without requesting any sort of information. Oh, yeah, you're CIA. Sure, I trust you. He actually is beating himself up over that because he knows he made a mistake. I'm just like, good. You know, they they are addressing the fact that that was a mistake that he shouldn't have made, and he is beating hard on himself for it. And I'm like, okay, so that is being talked about. It's not just being glossed over (laughs) that he just did that. Um... So that was good. I like that. But then also now we see that apparently this girl that he starts chatting up at the physical therapy, apparently she's working for somebody and they're surveilling him for some reason. Just, okay, I guess Leon just can't catch a break this season, can he? 
So um, I don't know what's going on with her. She's much more convincing, I think, than the CIA guy. Um, so I'm not I'm not gonna be as hard at him hard on him for missing this because I mean, hey, she's she's going to physical therapy. Apparently, the doctors are fooled too. She's just constantly going there for help with her leg that's not actually hurt. Um, so yeah, I'm curious to find out who these people are, why they're surveilling Leon. They might end up just being good guys and like they're surveilling him because of what he did to help Hakeem. Like we just want to make sure that he's not compromised or something. Or they could be bad people who want him dead for some reason. Who knows? But yeah, um, kind of interested to see where that goes. But aside from that, you know, this this episode was not the best. Um, trying, I feel like there was something else that I'm missing. Right, I think that was it. Um, all right, so with all that being said, that's it for these three episodes. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. We talk about and discuss all the good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe for future NCIS reviews, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.